and Gluey Muglawanafa Cthulhu Cthulhu Waganagal Fatagun. Oh, try this again. Then Gluey Muglawanafa Cthulhu Relia Wanga. Oh, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get this. Oh, hi YouTube. Don't mind me. I was just um, practicing some vocal exercises. Yeah, that's it. Exercises. Not summoning an ancient being from the depths of the ocean. Though if I were, you wouldn't mind, right? Everyone loves Cthulhu. In fact, since you're here, why not stick around for these top 10 incredible facts about the great dreamer himself, Cthulhu. You know what Cthulhu would like you to do? Hit that subscribe button, and while you're there, might as well click the bell for future notifications from the Great Old One. Guys, Great Old One, are we talking about Cthulhu there, or are we talking about me? Great... Oh, good grief. Number 10, created by H.P. Lovecraft. First and foremost, let's get the most disappointing fact out of the way. The legend of Cthulhu isn't part of some mysterious ancient mythology, as many likely hope. Rather, the tentacled being was a manifestation of the created and twisted mind of author H.P. Lovecraft. In 1928, Lovecraft published The Call of Cthulhu in Weird Tales, marking the first time The Great Old One was made public. The story established much of the foundation of the Cthulhu mythos that was later branched out into a rather extensive mythology surrounding cosmic entities, cults, and madness. Sorry, cultist, you're worshiping a false being. Number nine, one big Cthulhu family. You probably wouldn't know it just by looking at him, but Cthulhu is actually a family man, er, family squid. Outside of his great-great-grandfather, Azathoth, cosmic entity, outer god, and grandfather, Yaxothoth, grandmother and grotesque oddity, Shabnig Urath, parents, Nug and Yeb, and four siblings. Cthulhu also has seven children of his own, Gitanathoa, Yithogtha, Zothomag, Cthila, Teith, Niktosa, and Niktolu, have all popped up in later expansions of the Cthulhu mythos as children of the Great Old One and one of his two spouses, Idya or Kasogtha. Number eight, Cthulhu in pop culture. Since his creation, Cthulhu has popped up in a myriad of different movies, video games, and other medium. Though he may not be the focus of some, his presence is noted in the expanded mythology that tends to serve as the backdrop or inspiration to films like in the Mouth of Madness and The Haunted Palace, as well as the Twilight Zone episode, Grandma. If you need your dose of Cthulhu mythos, you'll want to pop in on The Call of Cthulhu, the 2000 and 2007 films aptly titled Cthulhu and Dagon, or spend some time playing the Arkham Horror board game and Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth survival horror video game. Number seven, Cthulhu Regio. The Great Old One of the Deep Blue has become such a prominent figure in and out of literature that his name has started popping up everywhere. Take, for instance, Cthulhu Regio, which has absolutely nothing to do with Lovecraft's mythos. In 2019, an image of Pluto, taken by the New Horizons probe, showed a dark region on the planet's surface, thought to be sort of cosmic tar. The mass extends 1,860 miles and appears to take the shape of a whale. Six days after its discovery, the New Horizons team dubbed the dark spot Cthulhu, a name that has since stuck. Number six, Cthulhu in nature. While on the topic of Cthulhu popping up outside of nature, we can't forget about two creatures of the wild sporting the great old one's name. The Panoa Cthulhu and S. Cthulhu are, respectively, a Californian spider in Mendocino and Sonoma counties, and a moth of the Irabita family found in New Guinea. Cthulhu has also been referenced in two microorganisms that play a role in termite digestion, Cthulhu macrofa. Marco, Polo, y you know what, I I'm not even gonna try. Get the video editors to actually do something. There, that's better. You know I love you guys. You know what, Never mind. Number five, the city of Relia. When Lovecraft started spinning the Cthulhu mythos, 
he did so in a way that made it sound like it was translated from ancient texts. Even Relia, the fantastical sunken city hidden within the Pacific Ocean, sounds like it belongs to an early world culture. Mentioned in the 1928 introduction to Cthulhu, Relia is described as the burial place for Cthulhu marked by unusual architecture. According to Lovecraft, Relia is located at 47 degrees 9 minutes south, 127 degrees 43 minutes west in the southern Pacific, which places it right near the oceanic pole of inaccessibility, or the farthest point from land. However, writer and Lovecraft's literary executor and Cthulhu contributor, August William Derleth, placed Relia at 49 degrees 51 minutes south, 128 degrees 34 minutes west. Number four, the deep ones. Aw, isn't he just the sweetest ick? Three years after bringing Cthulhu to life, Lovecraft extended the mythos with the Shadow Over Innsmouth, a story that revolved around a sort of an affiliate of Cthulhu's, another great old one known as Dagon. Unlike Cthulhu, Dagon actually has connections to real world mythology as either the Mesopotamian god of fertility or an Iron Age fish god. In Lovecraft's version, however, we're dealing with the latter, and the Deep Ones worship him and his spouse, Mother Hydra. These humanoid fish creatures are known to mate with humans as part of a pact that provides the town of Innsmouth a bounty of fish. Number three, Lovecraft and the Cthulhu Mythos. We've mentioned the Cthulhu Mythos a few times already, but calling the extended universe that actually divides us from the demented creator. As Lovecraft started to build upon the call of Cthulhu, he created what he dubbed the Arkham Cycle, or a series of interconnected stories taking place in or revolving around the fictional town of Arkham, Massachusetts. The term Cthulhu Mythos didn't appear until August Derleth coined it after Lovecraft had passed away and has been used ever since to describe a series of stories and books written by authors of the Lovecraft Circle. Robert Block, Clark Ashton Smith, Robert E. Howard, Frank Belknap Long, and August Derleth all contribute tales to expand the mythos. Number two, the cults of Cthulhu. We know Cthulhu is a fictitious being, but that hasn't stopped the advent of real cults devoted to either worshiping the tentacled being or the philosophies presented by the fictional beings. One such cult, the aptly named Cult of Cthulhu, popped up in the United States, organized in 2004 by Derek DeShaw, who later referred to himself as High Priest Venger Satanus. Generally, the so-called cults are simply a means to celebrate Lovecraft's works, though you know somewhere out there is a group trying to raise the ancient Cretan. Number one, not quite a god. Have you caught on that we haven't quite called Cthulhu a god? That's because, according to Lovecraft himself, these so-called gods are really extraterrestrial entities responsible for the creation of life. Within the 1931 short novel, At the Mountains of Madness, Lovecraft establishes a cosmic presence that is carried throughout much of his work. The introduction in The Complete Cthulhu Mythos Tales, written by S.T. Joshi, describes how Lovecraft sought to create beings that science of the early 20th century couldn't easily debunk as it could supernatural creatures like werewolves and vampires. And so he took to the stars and plucked out the concepts of monstrous cosmic entities like Cthulhu. Have your own Cthulhu fact to share? Scribe it onto the comments scroll below.